Okay, welcome back to the uh, PS2 Television Network. What we've got here is a bit of an unusual item. Hopefully the lighting's not so bad that you can't see it. This is actually a wooden cased PS2. This was sent to me by another uh, PS2 user located down in Florida. Um, he sent me two machines. He sent me a Model 70 and he sent me this one which is actually a Model 55SX that has been enclosed in a nice wood casing. Um, the 55SX arrived here in good shape, but the 70 needs to be put back together. It kind of suffered a little bit in the hands of the uh, delivery service. I don't remember exactly who delivered these for sure. But this is something that you just don't see every day because obviously IBM never offered them this way, but goes to show what you can do with a little bit of wood, some glue, some creativity, and some measuring tools. Anyway, it looks pretty sharp. Um, there is no way to get to the power switch on the outside, though, so I guess you have to turn it on from the inside. All right, the case pretty much slides off, and as you can see, there's there's nothing too uh, too difficult. If you wanted to make one of these for your own, basically you'd need some you'd need some appropriate types of slides that would be notched, or in this case, with a screw inserted in the wood to go into the right place here on the side of the system case. The original designer of this system elected to use the original case, and the only thing they did here, normally there's little metal tabs, and they just folded them back. Now here we have an interesting item. This is a Dallas DS1287 clock module. And what this is, this is a self-contained um, real-time clock and CMOS storage memory that has an integrated battery. After so many years, they run out of battery power, and Dallas Semiconductor says, well, too bad, that's it. Fortunately, they can be reworked, and that's a subject we're going to cover in another episode on the PS2 television network. There's been a power connector added here and a, a curious switch that I'm not quite sure of the function of, but it goes out here to uh, tap into what would appear to be the system speaker wiring. And then, of course, here's your power switch. I haven't actually tried powering this system up yet because... Um, I seem to be missing the hard drive data cable that connects to here and here. So I'll have to go ahead and get one of those at some point. But other than that, it looks like this one's pretty much ready to go. And it won't be too long before I give it an initial run up. And finally, for those who are curious or planning to build their own version of this system, here's a shot of the case from the bottom so that you can kind of see how the original, the original chassis of the machine fits into its new wooden case. It's not the tightest fit you ever heard of, but it certainly does hold the machine reasonably securely. And then here's a shot of the back with that curious switch whose function I'm still not quite sure of. And that's that.